Today we're going to be talking about problems that have to do with domain and range of functions and relations. The way you should think about domain, it's all the values that x can be. Anything that you can put in for x in some function or relation is the domain. And the range is all the values that y can be, anything that y can turn out to be. Usually we talk about domain and range with functions. So here's one, f of x equals 3x. f of x, sort of interchangeable with y, it's just a different notation. So the, the domain of this function would be everything that x could be. And in this function, you could plug in anything for x there. You can take any number and multiply it by 3. So the domain for that would be all real numbers. And then the, uh, the range, what you could get out of here, would also be all real numbers because there's, you can get every possible y value by putting in some value for x there. So this is one of those functions where it, the domain and the range are all real numbers. And you should start to think about this graphically too. If we were to graph this, f of x equals 3x or y equals 3x, it's a line kind of looks like that, a steep line going up, and it goes on in, in both directions. You can see just by looking at this that if you extended this graph out, the line would just keep on going and keep on going that way too. So it's going to go up and up and up and up to infinity. So it's going to cover all the numbers up to positive infinity and all the numbers down to negative infinity on the, on the y values. And then on the x values, it's going to keep going this direction too, out towards positive infinity, and this direction too, out towards negative infinity. So any line like this is going to have all reals for the domain and range of, uh, of the function. And you can kind of get a sense of that just by looking at it. This function here, y equals the square root of x, is a little bit different. There are some values we can't put in for x, namely negative numbers. It doesn't make sense to take the square root of a negative number you may learn later on that you get what's called an imaginary number, but that's not something we can graph on our typical Cartesian coordinate system here. The, the graph of this kind of looks like this. There's a point at 0, 0, put in 0 for x, a square root of 0, 0, you get y. There's a point at 1, 1, square, put in 1 for x, square root of 1 is 1, you get 1 for y. And then it kind of continues on as a curve like that, getting flatter as it goes out. And it heads on out in that way. It goes on out to infinity that direction, and although it gets very shallow, it keeps going up a little bit, so it goes on up to infinity in that direction. But it doesn't do anything down in this direction or back in this direction. So for the domain of this, we would say x is greater than or equal to 0. And for the range of this, we would say the same thing. Why? is greater than or equal to zero because there's no way to get a negative number out of this function. So that's one example where the domain of a function isn't and the range isn't all real numbers. One other thing that might pop up from time to time is this thing called a relation. And a relation is, is sort of like a function except it's defined by just a set of points. So instead of a, a formula that gives you lots of different points, a relation has a set group of points. And if you were to graph it, this relation here, it's got the points 1, 2, 0, 1, and 5, 6 on it. It would look just like that. No line, just this set of points. So that's a relation. And you can still figure out the domain and range for a relation. In fact, it's easier. The domain is everything x can be. So it's just this number, this number, and this number. If you were asked what the domain of this relationship is, you'd make a little set where it was 1, 0, and 5. And if you were asked what the range is, it would be these numbers here. So that's a, a brief review of domain and range for functions and relations. Let's, um, let's take a look at some problems that are likely to, to pop up in this area. The first one here says determine the domain and range and then they give you this function y equals the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. To start with the domain, and remember that's everything x can be, what I want to ask myself is, can I put something in for x that's going to make this not work? And, and the answer is yes, because I see a square root symbol here, and that should, be, that should set off an alarm bell for you, that there's some values we can't put in for x. Anything that makes what's under this square root symbol negative is not going to work. 
So if I put in, for example, a negative 2 in x, negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. You can't take that square root. This is not going to work. The way I, I figure out exactly what the, the domain is here is I ask myself, well, where will I get 0 here? Well, if I put a negative 1 for x, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So negative 1 works just barely. Anything more negative than that is not going to work. And anything greater than negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and on up, is going to work fine. It's going to make all these values positive. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And that is my domain. Now the range for this is all the things that y can be. And you have to do a little more thinking here. The smallest thing that can come out of this chunk is 0 because it can't be negative. And then we're always adding 3. So if I put in a negative 1 for x, I'm going to get a 0 plus 3 or a 3. If I put in a 0 for x, I'm going to get a 1 plus 3 or 4. So these y values are always going to be 3 or greater. There's no way to get anything less than 3 here. To get something less than 3, this would have to be negative, and it can't be. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 3. That's my domain and range for that function. Let's look at uh, one with a relation. This one says determine the, the range of the relation. Well, range is y values. So I'm going to look at the y values of the points that they've listed in this relation and simply make a set with those points. So negative 4, negative 1, and 1. And that is my range. Here's another one. It says find the domain and range of the relation and uh, gives you this notation here, x comma y with this kind of straight line and then 2y is less than 14. So this is an inequality. It won't really make it any harder. The first thing you want to do when you see something like this is solve for y. It's not really set up in our typical function format because we've got a 2 in front of the y. To do that, I'm simply going to divide both sides of this uh, function by 2, and you get y, whoops, not y equals, y is less than 7. Now that's something we can work with. Now what this says, actually, is the statement already of what the, the range is going to be. It's telling you what y is. y is less than 7. So that's our range. That was easy. And the question is, what's our domain? I don't see any x in here at all, and that can seem a little confusing. But the fact of the matter is, x can be anything. So x is all real numbers. Might help to graph this. To graph this inequality, y is less than 7. I'm going to find where y is 7. Let's say it's right here. And I'm going to put a dashed line there because it doesn't say less than or equal to. It says less than. So all this stuff below here, and stretching out that way and stretching out that way, all that stuff below there, is shaded. Well, x can be anything. x can be 0, and y is less than 7. x can be a million, and y is going to be less than 7 down here. So that's um, a graphic representation of why um, x can be all reals there. I in fact, if, if x isn't stated at all, you can just assume that x can be anything. OK, let's look at a couple more. This one says graph x plus 1 is less than or equal to 5 and negative 4x is less than or equal to 12. So this is a, an inequality here, a compound inequality, because it's got this and. And they want us to graph it. And the way we're going to graph it is on a number line. But before we do that, we want to simplify these. Um, so I just want x on one side of the inequality. This first one's pretty easy. I just need to subtract 1 to get x alone. So x is less than or equal to 4. And now this one, negative 4x uh, is less than 12. I've got to divide by negative 4. And you should remember that there's a special rule with inequalities. When you divide or multiply by a negative number, you've got to flip that sign. Let's see, these negative 4s cancel. I get x. And I get greater than because I flip my sign. And 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. I'm going to put my and here. Now when they say and, they're looking for that stretch on the number line where both these things are true, this and that. 
are true. And I'm going to start by um, putting in the first one. x is less than or equal to 4. So here's 4. And less than or equal to, it's going to be a solid filled in circle there. And we're going to be stretching off in this way because x is less than 4. So it's heading down that way. Now this next one says x is greater than negative 3. So let's put 0 in here. Here's negative 3. And a greater than negative 3 would be a, an empty circle. And then heading up this way, greater than. But I'm only going to fill in this portion of it. Because that's the only spot where both those things are true. I wouldn't fill in up over here. Even though this stuff is greater than negative 3 up here, it's not less than 4, and vice versa down here. All right, here's another one of these. Determine the domain. Oh, they're not asking us for the range here, just the domain of this one with the a square root symbol. And the square root symbol should alert you that you can't put everything in for x. And domain is x values. So that's what we're looking for. So what can we put in here to make sure what's under this uh, square root symbol is positive? Well, the first question is what would make it 0? If I put 49 in for x, 49 minus 49 would be 0. So 49 works. And everything greater. If I put in anything less than 49, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a negative number. So x could equal 49 or be greater than 49. And that statement about x is our domain. So that's the answer there. This next problem has a, a kind of diagram that you might see sometimes. And this is called a correspondence diagram. And this is another way of representing a relation. These, each of these pairs here would be points. So this would be the point 4, 0. Or the x value would be 4, and the y value would be 0. The idea here is that in a function if you, or a relation, if you plug in 4, you get out a 0. That's why they have these arrows. So the question is, what is the domain? Well, the domain is going to be all your x values. So it's just these guys here on the left. And you could write that in a set, 4, 5, 6. And that's really all there is to that. All right, last couple of problems. This one says determine the domain and range. And we've got a different kind of function here. We've got an x squared, y equals x squared plus 3. As you get more experience with different kinds of functions, you should start to build up an idea in your head of what they look like. It's kind of a zoo of the different functions. We already know that you know, y equals the square root of x looks something like this. And you know, y equals x, a line basically looks like that. Well, the x squared, y equals x squared, is what we call a parabola. And that's going to look like that. And then all these other little numbers out here, they just do things to slightly change um, where it's positioned on the graph or its shape. But the general, the general shape, this u-shaped thing, is going to be the same uh, for all the um, y equals x squared plus some other number kind of stuff. Question is, what is the domain and the range on this? Well, this is not a square root symbol, so we don't have to worry about negative numbers in here. You could put a negative number in and square it. In fact, it becomes a positive number if you do. And you could put in a positive number. In fact, you could put in almost any kind of number here. So it looks to me like the, the domain is not restricted in any way. You can put in anything for x, from negative infinity up to positive infinity. And if you look at this graph, if you were to extend this graph out, these uh, hands or sides of the graph are going up and out in both directions. So eventually, they'll go all the way to infinity this way, all the way to infinity this way, and it looks like all the way infinity to the top. So the domain, then, is x is all reals. Now the range, a little bit trickier here. Range here, one thing to notice is that it, when you put in a negative number for x, because you square it, it gets turned into a positive number. Any negative number squared is a positive number. And then the next thing you do is you add 3 to it. So by looking at this and thinking about how the math works, 
you might realize that you can never get a negative number here. The lowest number you could possibly get, in fact, would be, well, you could put in 0 for x, and then you'd have to add 3 to it. So 3 would be the lowest number you could get. If I were to graph this, it's going to be my u-shaped thing, but it's going to start at 3 and go up and out on the sides. So why, well, now I've crowded myself out here, y is either equal to or greater than 3, and it never goes below that. So that's going to be our range on that one. Okay, one more. Here they don't give you the function to look at, they just give you the picture. But you should recognize this now. This is a parabola, so it's going to have some formula like y equals x squared, something or other. Actually, this one, I'll just tell you, is y equals x squared minus 3. That minus 3 just brings the u-shape down a little bit. Just like this one, the plus 3 brought the u-shape up a little bit. Determining the domain and range. Well, you should know that um, with a parabola now, x is going to be everything. Even though it looks like these arms are pointing more up than out, if you were to extend this graph to infinity, it would reach infinity on the sides as well as the top. So the domain is x is all reals. You can put anything in for x. The range, well, as you can see, with the y values, it gets down to negative 3 here, but no lower. There's no value, no, doesn't cross anything at negative 4 or anything below that. And it goes up to infinity. So y is greater than or equal to negative 3. So hopefully that's helpful uh, in learning about the domain and range of functions and relations.